So you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here if you're new here hi hello i'm lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the growing family turn notifications on and give me a big thumbs up because it really does help me out today we're doing a q and a now i haven't filmed a q and a in a while i asked for questions on my instagram right there if you're not following me already and on twitter and if you're not following me on there it's linked up there all my social medias are in the description down below so if you want to follow me check out the description right, let's get some questions up questions 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 this question i've got is what's your opinion on the police dealing with mental health crisis now i've spoken about police and mental health a few times on here and i've personally had experience with police and mental health as well having been sectioned by the police multiple times removed from my flat involuntarily and being stopped from jumping off a bridge by police I can say that I wouldn't be alive without them. The police have arguably saved my life. Last time I had police involved was just over a year ago when I left A&E after overdosing. My personal opinion on police dealing with mental health crisis is this, that there should be a specific team that comes out when you're, in, when, when you're having a crisis. Police are good at what they do. I have had some bad experiences with police and mental health. If you don't know about that, I will make a video on that soon. But personally, what do I think about police dealing with mental health crisis? I think the NHS should be dealing with the crisis. When people go to A&E and ask for help, there should be some help offered. Police only have so many powers. They can detain you under section 136, section 135, that's it. Other than that, they can arrest you. Now than that, got the t-shirt. If you want to hear more about that story, let me know in the comments down below. But personally, I think that police should... Police do a good job, on the whole. Should it be their responsibility? No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't have to come to getting police involved for mentally ill people. Like, it's just not fair. Alright. But the police have arguably kept more people alive by being involved than if they didn't. So I guess that's my opinion. Next question is, what's your opinion also on like how people try to understand mental health? I think getting anyone to understand mental health is a challenge. For me, I'm open about my mental health. I'm not ashamed to have a conversation in public about it. I'm okay to say I've been sectioned in, in, in a mental hospital. But then you have certain, say, family members or friends that don't really understand what you're going through. My method for getting people to understand my borderline personality disorder, I bought this book called Millie the Cat Has or as borderline personality disorder and it's a, it's a picture book it's, a, it's like a kid's book but it breaks down what borderline personality disorder is and I show that to my mom to give her an understanding and it went really well when it comes to bipolar disorder my, it runs in my family so everyone's kind of aware of, of bipolar disorder my grandma has it, my mum has it my grandma's mum had it so my great nan had it so it runs in my family I find that I, if someone asks me about mental health I refer them to my YouTube channel because that's where all the information about me is personally I think the best way to communicate about mental health with other people is to just be open about it talk about it like you would any other subject I'm not saying go into detail of what stuff is I mean just say hey I have bipolar disorder hey I have PTSD and this is what happens to me because of this or I'll be what most people do and get a sunflower lanyard <laughs> 
some plot line yards are a sign of hidden disability. You can get mental health conditions, physical health conditions, neurological health conditions, and physical health conditions, and learning disorders. The next question is, does it get easier, brackets, recovery for self-harm? It definitely does get easier. I'm a year and a month free from self-harm, and honestly, I don't think about it anymore as an option. That and I got tattoos over all of them. Over my scars, I have tattoos, so I don't trigger myself anymore. Because when I was looking at scars, I was always thinking, I can do better than that. And it was just a competition with myself. Growing up, I had a friend who self-harmed a lot, and quite, quite serious too. It definitely does get easier though. The longer you stay free from it, the, the easier it gets. Stopping is the hardest thing, and if you haven't already, I made a video called How to Stop Self, How I Stopped Self-Harming, and I'll link it on the iCard up there. Because honestly, self-harm is something that is hard to stop doing because it's addictive. If you haven't seen my playlist of self-harm videos, I will link that in the description down below. Well, I've got a whole playlist on self-harm. Next question is, how do you do uni with health problems? I'm trying to study, it's so difficult with health problems. So, I have physical health conditions that kind of help they're kind of hard to deal with especially with the underground and I use my knee because I tore a tendon in my knee and I've got arthritis in my ankles my knees, my toes so I have to use a cane which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that personally I do find it a bit embarrassing because I'm only 26 and I need this mobility well, that was loud. My camera was flashing red and I went near through all these answers. Ah! So how I manage uni is I use a cane together for physical health reasons and my mental health. I take my medication before uni. I have clonazepam at uni. And then I buy milkshake. So as I was saying before my camera died on me, I'm now using my Canon G7X because my Canon 750D is dead. Why are all my cameras dying? I personally make sure I have my medication. The clonazepam that I take during my lecture is a big life lifesaver for me. Personally, I do take mental health days off. I took yesterday off, which is Thursday, for two reasons. One, I really didn't feel up to going to uni. Two, they was doing presentations and I don't do presentations. It doesn't affect my grades so I skipped it. When I'm actually at uni and my health problems are playing up, like my pots, my arthritis, just something that I've learned to deal with. Because I've had health problems since I started uni eight years ago. I started uni in 2016. And now we're in 2024, so it's been a long time. And I've had arthritis diagnosed for that length of time. I was diagnosed with arthritis. So personally, I just take, take each day as it comes and have my best focus on uni. I do always take fidget toys with me, like my fidget cube and my unicorn. My unicorn comes to uni with me. Because my unicorn is my comfort item. And honestly, I, I tend to plan videos when I'm in lectures. Because my role that I'm, I'm acting as for this production that we're doing is the assistant director and editing. Both stuff that I can't do until we actually start shooting. Not shooting, until we've actually got a script. I can't do anything. But yeah, that's my advice. Just try and stick it out. The next question is, how do you manage anxiety out in public? For a marzipan. That's how. <laughs> Which I was joking. But I'm not. But 
let's talk about the underground in the morning. So what I do to make myself feel less anxious is I wear my AirPods. Given I'm always terrified one's gonna fall out my ear and land on the train tracks. Because that's just a mean thing that would happen. So yeah, that's fun. So I pack my AirPods in, I have my cane. Um, I, try, I try to get myself to the middle of a tube so I can hold onto the, hold onto the pole. Because my balance is so shit that if I wasn't holding on to something, I would knock up everyone over. But by my unsteady feet. So yeah, that's kind of how I deal with anxiety. I put my headphones in, take them as a pound. And I just try to get focus on music. Now we're going on to Twitter questions. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter! Or should I say X? So the first question is, when should a person post a trigger warning? Head wounds? Self-harm? Fresh self-harm scars? Not scars. Fresh self-harm? Suicide attempt? Eating disorder content? Blood? Sexual assault details? Assault details. The next one is, uh, next one is okay. I got one for you. Do you spend time looking back at your mental health journey and how far you've come in in t come in the intervening time? I look back and I, all I think is how much time have I spent in hospital? under section and it honestly upsets me because I was in such a dark place when all these admissions took place I didn't see a way out I thought I was gonna die by suicide so that was particularly hard to come to terms with Then I look back at my eating disorder and I've gone from this but I, I try not to look back too much if I'm being honest because it does trigger me. My own past triggers me. <laughs> so there's only so much I can do to really manage how I feel. So yeah, that's all the questions I've got for this video. If you have a question you'd like to ask me to answer in a video, leave it in the comments down below. Or if you just have a general question about anything, also put it in the comments down below. Put anything in the comments down below. They're waiting for you. It's waiting for you, not they're waiting for you. I know what I mean. Now I'm going to go back to bed <laughs> because I am tired but it was great filming this video so thank you. Thank you to everyone who asked questions and if you're new subscribe, join the growing family, we, we need you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.